So, uh, Mike Johnson was voted uh, Speaker of the House in a historical move for Louisiana because not only is he the first speaker that's from Louisiana, but he's also the first Southern speaker that we've had since 1999. But how does somebody that's largely unknown ascend the political ranks like this whenever you're running against people like Steve Scalise or Jim Jordan, who are more well-known politicians? Timing is everything in politics, and if Steve Scalise had uh, waited uh, until Mike Johnson became a candidate, he might have been the one, but as it turned out, Johnson's timing was impeccable. The Republicans were worn out. They basically decided they had to settle on somebody, and Mike Johnson kind of fit the bill as a guy who could um, navigate the treacherous waters between the arch conservatives, of which he is one, and the more moderate conservatives who are in the Republican delegation, and he comes across as a reasonable fellow. He's a nice man. He speaks well. He's a smart guy, and he's a good uh, ambassador not only for Louisiana, but for his alma mater, LSU. Uh, he's the first uh, LSU person to rise to this kind of uh, prominence in politics since Hubert Humphrey he was vice president of the United States. So it is a meteoric rise. He wasn't even on the scene 10 years ago in the state legislature served in the state house for two years. He's been in the U.S. House for less than seven years, and he is the number one guy in the U.S. House of Representatives. In Louisiana, we know him as an arch conservative, and that he is, uh, and he voices the conservative message extremely well, as well as anybody in politics now, and he's got the platform to do it, unlike John Kennedy and Bill Cassidy, our two U.S. senators who are former Democrats. He's been true to his thoughts from day one, so we know who Mike Johnson is, and he is a person who on social issues has been, some would say outside of the mainstream of America, but maybe inside the mainstream in Louisiana. After all, this is a state that Donald Trump won by 400,000 votes twice, and he is a person who's very close to the former president, who if he runs is quite likely to win our state again. So Johnson's conservative politics on social issues may not play well in places like Los Angeles and New York City, they play very well in places like Baton Rouge and Bunky. And so he is popular in Louisiana. He won his congressional seat this last time without even an opponent. And uh, I think he's solid in places like the South. And because of that, he has enough mojo to mount the uh, successful run for the U.S. House of Representatives. But three or four other people had to fail before he got his shot. And the fact that there was an exhaustion factor, I think, certainly helped him. How is his ascension to the House Speaker position going to affect us here in Louisiana? I don't think it hurts Louisiana to have a House Speaker. It, it should help. The question is how much. And his politics are in sync with the governor-elect. It would seem that on the issues, they are very much in line. So I would think it would help Louisiana. And uh, because of that, our state should be thankful that we have somebody in power. And as of now, Scalise is still the number two person in the uh, majority in the yes, United States two House. two Louisiana that's, politicians that are holding these top positions now. That's, that's the first time it's ever happened from one state. And as I've said a few times, uh, Louisiana has 1.4% of the national population, but we, far, we generate far more than 1.4% of the national news. And in this case, we have inordinate power on Capitol Hill. So I think it will help us. With him occupying this position, do you see the divisiveness clearing up anytime soon? I don't, but I do see him as somebody who will talk to the other side. And he is a, a nice person. He, there's, there's not a lot of uh, baggage with him. He, he doesn't come in with a, a boulder on his shoulder. He's a nice person, he's articulate, and uh, he is convincing for his cause. But his cause to some is not acceptable uh, in American politics now. And it, it plays well in some parts of our state and our country, but doesn't play as well in others. And most people who are on the other side, and the other side has almost as many seats as he does, they're not in accord with that. So there's bound to be a collision, and the question is whether he can handle that. And he has very little experience. He's never been a committee chair, and he's the least experienced speaker as far as House experience we've had since 1883. So he's a relative newbie. He's a talented man, but he's going to have a big learning curve with a big job. Johnson has uh, defied the odds to get the job, and now he has to defy more odds to keep the job. And it will be fascinating to see how it plays out because he's got to navigate a tough, tough sea of uh, challenges as he looks forward 
and I'm not sure anybody could do this job effectively, but he wanted the job, he got it, and we'll see if he can hold it, and if he can, he will go down as one of the most able politicians our state and perhaps our country has ever produced, because it will be an extremely treacherous voyage for Mike Johnson.